All righty, hunters and huntresses, welcome to part three of our postseason scouting. Uh, we're doing bluff gap stuff today. And the main thing behind a bluff gap or the description of a bluff gap, kind of simple, is if you have a in hilly country, mountainous country, <clears throat> above creeks and drainages and stuff, there could be a bluff system. So, and the bluff system that you find where deer cannot get up, sooner or later you're gonna to come to a place that deer can use to travel up and down to, to go to different areas. And uh, the southerners call them bluff gaps. You know, some people might call them something else, just, just gaps or, or level changes or whatever. But anyway, we got a little example of one right here. Deep, dark hollow, upper hardwoods, bluffs that go way, probably a half mile around. Got a little deal right here where deer, pigs, whatever can cross up at people, I guess. So we're looking for fresh tracks in it. And uh, similar with creek crossings, you'll find community, ones where does and, and, and fawns will use them, but you'll find little slight ones that bucks use. And these bluff gaps don't have to be no huge area. They can be as big enough they can get their rack through them. But in some areas, you'll find where they've got to jump, say, 10 feet. And deer can do that easy just to go up. And you'd be surprised what a dang pig can do because they can get up in things and, and jump and climb. Associating one with a creek crossing is a plus. So, and this, is like I say, is, is above a, a pretty good creek area. And if you find one to to put cameras on. I talked about in the last episode about keeping a camera in the backpack. If you find something you want to put a camera on, leave it. You know, this would be a prime spot. Put it up high somewhere where you can get pointed down where you can get enough time frame to catch them coming or coming down. If they do it quick, the camera might not pick them up. So if you find one that you want to hunt that's got enough sign in it or you're interested in hunting, it's got uh, a trail going to a food source or, or whatever your plan is for hunting, bedding area. Make your decision if you want to hunt it. Like in the mornings, to me, I'm going to hunt above it somewhere. You know, I might not be able to see the gap. It might be on up a point or something, or up a finger or a trail above it. And then in the evening, I'm going to hunt below it. And you, like again, you might not be able to see it. It might be a quarter mile away, it might be a half mile away, it might be closer to the creek if it's associated with the creek crossing. I've hunted a few of these over the years and uh, they can be boring, but they can be successful. Some of the bluff gaps are used to escape from uh, pressure, other hunters and stuff like that. So you can kind of co correlate that with uh, if you know where parking areas are and stuff like that, where people could push them to you. But uh, they are a, they're just another piece of a puzzle for trying to take a mature buck and the the bluff gaps that are in rough, isolated places are the ones I like, the ones that are hard to get to. And as in creek crossings, to hunt a bluff gap, whatever, you've got to be able to access it without spooking deer or interfering with the deer. So make sure if you find one you want to hunt, the number one rule when you find a place you're going to hunt is access. You've got to be able to get to it and get out without messing the deer up. So uh, I always access the same way and leave the same way because the less, if, I, if you come in from two different ways or if you're always changing the way you access, yeah, you could be supposedly tricking the deer because not, they're not gonna be able to pattern you, but you're, you're leaving more scent out for them to pattern you is, is my thought. So I'm not going, I'm gonna go in out the same way and not cross any trails or any habitat that the deer are gonna be in. If they're in the bottoms, you first think you're suspect you're using the bottom, you don't want to access from the bottom to hunt it in the morning because they could still be there and you push them out and you probably wouldn't ever even know it. They just, they just slide on out. So, but access is key. So I always think about that. Any type of hunting that you're going to do is if you can get in and out without interfering with the deer. This is the third part of our little series here. We've got shed hunting as part one, creek crossings as part two, and then bluff gap part three. So watch all of them kind of tie them together, you know. If you're not a mountainous terrain hunter, you can still use creek crossings and, and, and flat ground and stuff, tie them in with swamps and then stuff like that. But, but we're strictly bluff gapping right here for right now. So, but it, for the mountainous folks in the, not just Alabama, but different parts of the country. So uh, y'all stick with it.